I invite all of you to please join me for a moment as we point our noses up to the sky. We're going to get all snooty here as we stare down on the world with our judging eyes. And let's determine once and for all what the 16 best log textures are. I'm curious how my opinions are going to line up with your opinions on this. Uh, obviously, my opinions are just straight facts, though, so I'm never wrong. But uh, yeah, it should be interesting. Let's pick them up and let's put them down in the right order. All right, here we go. We're going to arrange them from least useful to most useful. And hopefully nobody disputes my first choice here. I'm going to go with the, the birch logs. Oh, I've never once been able to use this in a build. The, the contrast, the peppered look just doesn't work. Even after the texture update, you know, it looks a little bit better now. But still, I just I just can't do it, guys. Can't do it. Jungle logs. I mean, the texture is great on this one. It's the color. Brown and green, I think we all know what that looks like. Okay, then uh, I would go for oak, actually, surprisingly. I find the lines are pretty harsh on this one. It's great for, like, ruined, weathered, rustic builds, but if you want something pleasing on the eyes, this one just kind of stands out to me, and usually I want to build something that looks pleasing. All right, next we got the spruce logs. Surprise, surprise! You, you might think that would be at the top of the list. No, 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 no. I find spruce logs are kind of like the younger brother to... Dark Oak. Anytime I use Spruce in a build, it's like, oh, I should just use Dark Oak. It would have looked better. And that's why it's more towards the, the useless side. Another surprising one, I would go for Warp next. The problem with this one, I want to use it, you know, but it's got two colors in it. It's got the light blue and it's got like the purplish color. And that makes it so much harder to use in a build because you introduce two colors with it. That's kind of the problem with the Birch as well. I'd like Acacia, but I find it's like a little too bright most of the time. And then one I've been sleeping on for a long time here is jungle logs, the stripped ones. Actually looks pretty good, especially mixed with some of the other logs in the game. It's like I'm abandoning a child almost. But for many years, dark oak was my favorite log. Now it's kind of taking a back seat. We're going to put it pretty close in the middle of our list because we got this guy now. And this guy's just so much better for most of the cases where I would want to use this. Uh, we'll go for crimson next. Surprisingly, this works with a lot of blocks in the game. Like all the nether update blocks were pretty much designed to work with that. Plus, like, a lot of the terracottas look great with it, and uh, this is very versatile, actually. As opposed to, like, the warp variety, which has two different colors, this is just, like, two different shades of the same sort of color. Makes it a bit easier to use. Acacia, you know, the gray colors, grays are super abundant in the game, and it's nice to have another variety of it. We'll go for birch next. It would be much higher on our list if we didn't have the oak, but this is still good on its own for... Like tropical, beach, sunshiny sort of builds where you want something nice and bright. I think it's like 70% of people choose blue as their favorite color. And if it's not their favorite, like mine's green, blue is my second favorite still. <laughs> and specifically the shade of it, the aqua blue sort of color is great. Love it. Uh, again, very versatile, this crimson color. I think it's a little bit easier to use than this one. You know, Minecraft is all about nature, all about earth tones. And so you want the oak. And you want the dark oak as the best, most useful blocks in the game. By far, these two are especially good. All right. Anyways, that is my log list. Hopefully your opinions aren't too wrong on the matter. Because <laughs> I'm definitely not wrong. No, no, no. Uh, check this out. Uh, a zombie pigment spawned from that portal. Somehow got in the minecart. And it just happens to be a baby uh, zombie pigment. So he doesn't suffocate going through the tunnels. What a sneaky guy. I think uh, mobs don't despawn when they're in minecarts anymore, which is kind of interesting. But let's get into it here. So I got a technical project I want to do today, and I got a building project. I think we're going to start with the technical. Check this out. This is our grand collection of ink left. We're almost out. Almost all out of ink. So we got to build a squid farm today, because if we run out, oh, 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 bad things are going to happen. Our squid farm used to be in this tank with the guardians. They would laser the squid and kill them, and we would collect the drops, but uh, squid don't just spawn anywhere anymore. They only spawn in oceans and in rivers, and this is not an ocean. <laughs> Even where the guardians are spawning, this is not an ocean. It's like desert, plains, and yeah. Now, there's no way to get squid spawning in there anymore. It's just not possible. So we're going to have to find a new spot, and I don't feel like draining an ocean today, so it's probably going to have to be a river. Looking around our area here, I was actually kind of surprised. We have a spot right around here with no rivers. So we don't have to, like, drain the rivers, <laughs> which would be such a huge time saver. I think if we're around this tower here, 
you get major bonus points if you know what this is from. Uh, I think the... I think we got a river right here, and look, as soon as we approach it, squid spawn in here. So this is like a prime location, nice big chunk of water, river biome to work with. Yeah, that's great. So the hard part of this is all done for us, pretty much. Uh, I think we will drain a little bit of the river, though. I think this U shape over here, the part that sticks out, and then maybe we'll connect that side of the river to, like, over here somewhere, just so we still have rivers and it looks nice in our worlds. Maybe we'll make a tunnel through the the ground or something. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, we'll drain this spot and then we'll have to stand like a hundred blocks towards the tower there. So just double checking and making sure these are in river biome and not in desert. Like if we go over here, it's water, but it's actually desert and that won't work. It's got to be river. So just double check all this. We got room to expand if we need to, but I think we're just going to aim for like 32 columns of water. I don't have a lot of experience making squid farms, but I think I've heard, like, you don't really need a lot, and it's, like, diminishing returns. Obviously, it's better if you have more water, but it's, like, less effective the more you add. I'm hoping that's good enough. We'll see. So we'll have 16 on that side and 16 on this side. Yep, yep. So that's our general plan. We got it figured out. Let's get to setting things up. We're going to drain the U-shape first. Please go away, water. I don't want you anymore. Habitat loss. Serious problem. Not for me, though. You know, I was just thinking, they made it so hay bales and beds reduce fall damage. If there's any block in this game that should reduce fall damage, it should be the sponge, right? Right? <laughs> Oh, snappers. All right, so I've been preparing the area here. Squid spawn from Y63 down to 46, I think. So I'm digging a big hole, and we're going to stand in the middle, and we'll be able to view both sides, hopefully, is the plan. But I found a ton of caves while doing this, and I think we're actually, like, within range of the Guardian farm. So the, these have been killing my rates on the Guardians, for sure. <laughs> we should probably light these up. I found a pig over here. Hey, buddy. Just chilling out in a cave. That was kind of interesting. And also, down this path, look at this. Look what we found here. Old school mine shaft with the chest still. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And there's a skeleton farm. Okay, there was a ton of skeletons here before. I guess uh, they didn't want to spawn this time. Uh, yeah. Skeleton farm right by this place. That's kind of cool. I keep accidentally taking screenshots. I don't want to take screenshots. Okay, this isn't super useful for us right now, but, you know, maybe in the future if we build stuff in the desert here, you know, it could be, could be kind of useful. Found a dual cake spider spawner. All right, everybody. So here's the deal. I decide let's hop into a creative copy of our Let's Play world. This is not our Let's Play world, actually. Just so I can show you a couple things, a couple oddities with squid <laughs> that uh, will be hard to show you in the Let's Play world. Just because we have to stand like 100 blocks away from this farm for it to work properly. And uh, there's going to be some confusing stuff here. So first off, one test I did was to check if squid actually spawn in bubble columns. And they do, both upward and downward. I thought, you know, you could just put magma blocks on the ground to make a farm and they'll get pulled down into them and killed. But that doesn't really happen. Uh, they totally ignore being moved by the bubble columns. And they'll only touch them if they accidentally swim into them. So the other thing is the game tries to move them with the bubble columns and then they like get snapped back into position. So you'll sometimes see like flying squid and stuff. So that's fun. <laughs> uh, anyways, what we're planning on doing with our squid farm is to have two columns. One will have just regular water. I think downward flowing will probably work. That'll go down and then we'll have a bubble column going up. It'll be a pair of two. And I'm planning on putting like a minecart that goes around on our track. Just because I want to do something kind of fun with the squid farm. I don't want to build like a standard boring thing. <laughs> and then the cool thing about this is uh, squid should get picked up by the minecart. It might be a little weird. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, yeah. There he goes. He got picked up by the minecart. And whoop, down he goes. Goes over an activator rail and ejected into a blue campfire, which kills him quickly. Hopper below to pick up the drops. And I just wanted to like double check like what happens if you get a million of these guys in just to make sure that doesn't break it. And 
kind of does a little bit. But I think it'll fall through eventually. I hope, maybe. <laughs> it's struggling a little bit. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Good stuff. All right. So we are back in the Let's Play world now. We're going to start building this thing. So we're lining the soul soil up with the spots we picked out before in the river biome. And uh, we're starting at Y45, I think is what we want, like above the soul soil here. 44.875 when we're standing on it. And uh, as you saw, it's a really simple design. It's not going to take us very long. So we'll have activator rail, power rail, and then to get it to go up, we put one over here too and break it. And then we take advantage of the fact that minecarts can travel diagonally through blocks. And we'll just encase it with glass like this, get rid of the middle one, and build it up. So I think we can share the campfires between two of these things. So I'm going to try to do that as well. We'll put it like over here. All right, very good, very good. So we kind of got the squid farm set up. Now we're just testing it out. It's in the rough stages. And from what I've seen, we probably need like double to triple the water, at least in here. <laughs> How many squid we got this time? We got one, we got two, we got three on that side. And four, five. I think we want like 15 or so, right? Um, yeah, so we did hook it up though. Flip the lever, and we got rid of the redstone blocks. We have a switch for it instead. And the minecarts come down and grab the squid. Oh, there he goes. They get ejected into the campfire. And then we set up some droppers down here that whenever something's in here, it automatically shoots it out. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then it goes into a water stream, all combines together. And just for now, it is shooting out right over here. So we'll probably want to set up some hoppers here and some chests to collect the drops. So in general, I don't really like the AFK at farm. So I tried to design this in a way where when we approach the farm, like when we're in the area, uh, this since this is the first water that gets loaded, we should get a nice wave of squid spawning every time. We got one, we got two, three. Yeah, I think we got like five there or so. So it's not too bad. Like every time we approach it, if we're getting 10 to 16 ink or whatever, that's pretty good. Okay, so we got one, we got two. I think we got three here. Three isn't really ideal. We might need to double the size of this, but the problem is <laughs> we uh, we don't have any glass. We don't have villagers to buy glass. We uh, just used up all our sandstone, I believe, as well, working on this. So we're hurting on the resources. We really got to work on the infrastructure of our Let's Play world. And this is one of the things... Like, we needed a trickle of squidding coming in again, so that's why we did this today. Okay, so moving on here, we're going to get to our building project, which just happens to use ink sacks for the Dark Prismarine. And now we can uh, craft this without uh, worrying about running out. Uh-huh, so what are we going to be working on? Well, a certain project caught my attention today. I was looking at it, saw it wasn't finished, and I was like, why don't I just finish that? <laughs> this house over here has been kind of half done for quite a while now. It's like, eh, you know, I could probably finish it now. I, I got it in me. Uh, yeah, we got, a, we got a bit to do on this, though. I know it looks like it's pretty much done, but no, we got to build the whole roof and everything for it. And we hit, ran into a problem when we worked on this before. We got to the second floor, and it's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Since I don't really know how to build houses, the roof is like over here. And there's not going to be enough vertical height on the second floor if, like, the roof over here comes across. It's only going to be, like, one or two blocks tall in certain places. So, yeah. <laughs> that discouraged me last time I worked on this. But not anymore. I think I know what we're going to do. We're going to have to build this side taller and just make some adjustments. Uh, overall, though, just looking at the structure, I still do like the block palette I chose for this. I think it's pretty good. But there are definitely some design choices I question myself on now like why why did I use full blocks here is a big question huh why would you do that use panes they add depth and uh, just look better always most of the time anyway so we're gonna switch those out I think we will get rid of the window I'll just show you a couple a couple changes we're making here but I'll do most of this off camera get the panes there so we have a bit more depth in the build uh a lot of the windows, I think we will keep the fences, but not this one next to the mushroom stems. This will also be glass. I think that makes sense. So for a long time, I had a huge aversion to using jungle planks. I kind of just wrote them off from being in the game. Like, I, I was never going to build with them. But now it's like, I just love the things. 
<laughs> so we're going to switch out the acacia floor. I think the jungle planks will look a lot better. They have that like peachy color that works really well with brick, while the acacia here kind of stands out. It's a little hard on the eyes, and I think this will just be a lot nicer. So something I've kind of learned about building lately is like you want to establish patterns in your building and then follow through with those patterns so that like when you see something, you can anticipate how it should look in other places as well. If that makes sense. So I'll give you an example here. Like we have brick, then we have a spruce log running across, white terracotta. That's good. Over there, same thing, brick, spruce, white terracotta. But then there's some places here where it's like, I ditched that rule. <laughs> this is goes brick to prismarine there. This is fine over here. But then on the balcony, especially I noticed we have a spot here where it just goes to white terracotta. And now, like, what do we put above this? Uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to switch this to brick, and then we'll do the log, and then white terracotta above that. Makes more sense to me. So let's get this switched out. Not quite sure what the mushroom blocks are about, but I think we'll ditch them. Or we'll, maybe we'll just make them a bit more gentle. We'll, we'll go for this instead. We got a bit of a weird profile on the fireplace and chimney on this thing. I think I was trying to taper it down to a single block thickness at the top here, and I do it really quickly. Uh, it's probably got to be a bit bulkier, so we're going to adjust this as well. Ditch the brick here. Keep that stone brick all the way up. And we'll add walls to round it out a bit. Kind of get like an in-between block with it. Well, uh, this is like uh, two or three hours later of very finicky building, but we got it done. Check it out. Oh, just look. Look at that shot now. Look at the difference. It's, uh, it's pretty much the same, isn't it? <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh, there, there's a reason I don't build roofs, guys. What's the point? You can't tell anyways. Uh, no, you cannot, actually. Now that we can fly around in the game, it's kind of important. Uh, that side of the building was, like, pretty much done, though, before we started. That's the money shot over there. But you can see now we got the other sides of the building a little bit more complete as well. This is our chimney side. Kind of scattered brick, granite, and uh, terracotta together. Chimney, I think, is looking a lot better. We got... Uh, some actual roof action happening here. That's kind of cool. I like that. And then this is the other main side of the building here. So the roof used to go kind of like that. I ditched the, the two ends on it and kept the middle section where it was. And then I just added this bit on the top to heighten the building. And I think that looks pretty cool as it is. I like that. So that's, that's great. We finished the walk under thing here. Added some lights on both sides. Keep it nice and bright. And then this side of the building is, uh, is a bit weird. I did it last, and I kind of rushed through it. <laughs> yeah, so we probably won't get to working on the interior on this today, but I'll just show you what it's looking like inside for right now, how we got the rooms laid out. Uh, I'm kind of in a phase now where I really like to add mini farms in my, my buildings like this, just so that they serve some sort of function, and there's a reason to visit them. So, like, we added the cocoa farm to one of our Sandy City buildings recently. And I'll probably try to stick something in here and then decorate it a bit as well. Um, th this goes out to like a balcony sort of thing. I don't know what you would call this. Place to eat your breakfast, you know, and enjoy the weather. Got a bit of a garden thing. And then you can get to the other side of the building. We're on the, the walk through thing right now. That's right below us. Um, and then we can go here. There's kind of like a little upstairs sort of thing. And then it goes down. Very cramped on this side <laughs> and out the side door here. Uh-huh. And we'll just take a fly through so you can see the roof. Because I actually built a roof, guys. Look at this. There's a roof on this thing now. You can see it only when you're flying, though. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, a mess. Ah, oh, it just feels so good to get that done because <laughs> we see this all the time, right? It's always kind of bothered me, and now it's like, oh, it's actually done. Look at that. Unbelievable. Uh, of course, we need to do some landscaping on the outside here. We really got to figure out how to blend these two together and this thing. <laughs> I don't know what to do about this building. It's, it's like, uh, I like the inside of it, but the outside is a bit weird. Uh, anyways, we're going to do a little technical project over here as well. Recently, we upgraded the tree farm. We added like a sorting system to it. I want to add one more thing to it today. Uh, this is great for farming spruce and jungle logs, the 2x2 two two trees, but recently I also discovered we can farm dark oak with this tree farm, and it's one of the main building blocks I use, so I want to get that set up. The only thing is, uh, 
the way this works is we have six dispensers and, and pistons that go up here. And it like snakes back and forth up the thing here with a bunch of repeaters. But when we farm the dark oak, we only want two of these to activate. The bottom two, not the top four. And the only way to really control that is to take the TNT out when we want to farm dark oak and put it back in. Uh, but what we can do, what I realized, is just add a switch over here. After the second dispenser, we're going to lock the repeaters. We'll have like an on-off to lock them. And then the signal won't be able to pass through. So we also built a similar version of this tree farm on Hermitcraft, but I like what we did there a little bit more, where we have two towers, one on the other side as well. It doesn't really do anything on Hermitcraft, it's just for show. But on here, I think we'll also add the tower to bounce out the look of the tree farm, and we'll use that to run a redstone signal up to our dark oak switch up there to lock the repeaters. And we'll add like a lever here or something to send the signal up, or maybe a button over here to switch between them. Oh no! <laughs> Darn it. There might be a flaw with the plan, guys. Uh, when I flipped the switch, the tree farm blew up. Ah! Oh. No, 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 no. Why? Oh, it would have been so good. Now I gotta rebuild everything. And the worst part is it blew up the top half and a, I saw a TNT fell down the hole here. I'm not in the mood for you right now. This is a bad timing. Uh, yeah, TNT fell down here too. Yikes. Well, I think it's a good time to rage quit right now, so that's going to be it for today, guys, but we will do the comment of the day. I'm going to take a break and then I'm going to fix that. Uh, it says, hey, Ergo, have you ever tried speed running Minecraft? I know you did certain challenges and achievement speed runs, but have you ever considered tried speed running a certain category for Minecraft. Ooh. A long time ago, I once tried getting all the achievements in the game, and I got to like the three hour mark, and then I just quit. <laughs> so nobody ever saw that uh, video. Um, no, I haven't really done it too much. I, of course, we did the speed challenges in the past. I think um, I would enjoy trying speed running. I don't think I would like ever be good at like the top level. Like, I don't think I'd ever set a really good time. Um, I enjoy the st strategizing and learning part of it and improving my skills. The luck factor, no, 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 no. <laughs> that would just frustrate me to no end. And I don't think I would ever get to like a top tier uh, movement and stuff in this game. Uh, it, it's not my specialty really. So I would do it for fun, not for like showing off, I don't think. Um, I do have an idea for another one of those speed challenges though. I think I'm going to do it hopefully sometime soon here. And uh, it's it's a wacky idea. I've just been wanting to try. So that hopefully that'll come out soon. And uh, we're going to end the episode for today, guys, though. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, as always. Until the next one, take care. Bye-bye.